In today's video, I'll be recreating my entire to-do list workflow step-by-step step from start to finish. I'm not gonna waste time on telling you why a task manager is crucial, because if you're watching this, you probably already know that. And your question is probably more along the lines of which one to use. So I'm gonna go over why I've settled with Todoist, followed by an overview of the Todoist desktop app, and I'm then gonna recreate my entire workflow, and we're gonna finish up with some really important tips that took my productivity to the next level. So let's get started. So why Todoist? And the first really big one is Natural Language Processing, or NLP for short. This refers to telling Todoist when a task is due with natural language, such as see doctor tomorrow at 4 p.m. or feed puppy at 2 p.m. every day. Once you get used to Todoist's natural language, it's really hard to go back to not using it. Then it's how fast and snappy Todoist is. If you've tried a bunch of different task managers, you know how snappy Todoist is. It's one of the most responsive applications that I use in my entire workflow. Then we have integrations, and although I only use one, Todoist offers dozens of integrations with dozens of different apps, and we'll get to all that in the later parts of this video. Then we have the fact that it's cross-platform, and although I predominantly have Apple products, I prefer using my PC for my desktop. However, I was an all-Apple user for the majority of my adult life, and I still chose Todoist. And then we have its simplicity while still being very robust and capable. I just love how simple Todoist is while being very feature rich. It's crazy how fast you can add a task while assigning it a due date, a filter, a project, and a priority without even touching your mouse or trackpad. And lastly, price or lack thereof. The free version is obviously free and the vast majority of people don't need more than that. Let me say that I consider myself a pretty heavy user of Todoist and I use the free version and not because I don't want to pay for premium, but simply because the free version has every single feature that I need. But this wasn't always the case. I paid for the premium version for three to four years and then Todoist moved a lot of the premium features onto the free version. And as of 2022, in my opinion, Todoist has a better free version than what most apps charge for their paid version. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a quick overview of Todoist. And if you know everything related to Todoist, including filters and labels and all the natural language processing regarding it, feel free to skip to the next chapter where I recreate my entire workflow. So I start off with adding a task. And while yes, you can open up Todoist and press over here or over here on the top right to add a task, that's not really convenient and there's a better way to do it. So a better approach is by coming here to settings and go on advanced over here on the advanced tab. And here is a show high to do this, but most importantly, a quick add task. And over here, you can choose something like control space to add a task and then update. So then you can press control space or whichever option that you chose for your keyboard shortcut. And then you can quickly add a task wherever you are, such as um, what are the plants? And this is great because you can use it no matter what you're doing on your desktop. And it takes away all of the friction from adding a task. Once you add a task, if all you do is type in the task name and press enter, it's gonna sit right here on your inbox and nothing else. Obviously, this is not ideal and Todoist has a ton of organizational features that you'll want to make use of. And the first one is date and you can obviously come here and choose a date manually or you can use what's called natural language processing. So you can come here, what are the plans tomorrow? I don't even have to type tomorrow, I can just put TOM 4 p.m. and it knows it's gonna alert me tomorrow at 4 p.m where I can type in a recurring task, such as every day at two. Well, in this case, it picked up 2 a.m., so 2 p.m. Now it's gonna remind you every single day at 2 p.m. And you can see here on this little symbol next to tomorrow at 2 p.m. that it's a recurring task. And if you want more details about it, just hover over it. And you can see here that's um, every day at 2 p.m. So then some other examples of natural language processing, you can put something like at the end of the month, so it's gonna pick up um, that we're in April and the end of the month is April 30th. So then you can also put in on the 4th of every month. So now it's gonna remind you every month, May 4th, June 4th, July 4th, all the way until you stop it. So if I just add here this Saturday at 4 p.m. And then if I just add another task such as feed Maki, which is my dog at eight. And now that you have dates assigned to your tasks, this is when today and upcoming come into play. So if you come here to today, you know you have to feed uh, Maki at 8 p.m. And you come into upcoming and you know we have a task tomorrow. But we're just scratching the surface here. So then you also have descriptions and subtasks. So when you press on it, you have a description slot over here and then a subtask over here. I like to use descriptions to add supporting resources to my tasks, such as website links when appropriate, or just a quick description of what some task is. This is particularly useful for collaboration purposes, but that's not something that I use, so I can't comment on that. You can also subdivide your tasks into subtasks. 
So you can add something here, in this case, plant one, and then another task for plant two. And this is helpful if some of your tasks have multiple steps. Each subtask, once you click on it, can also have its own description as well as its own filters and all that, which we'll get to in a minute. And lastly, we also have sections, and sections are just another cool way of organizing your notes. So if you hover over at the end of a block like this one, you have the option to add section. And then once you give this section a name, you can then come over here to the view option and you can choose view as a board. And then much like a normal Kanban board, you can just move tasks around. So for instance, you could have an inbox here and when this is done, you can move it to researching or working and then complete. I'm obviously just throwing examples here, but many people have great use cases for this one. We're gonna skip filters and labels for now, but we're gonna get back to it in a second. And let's just first go to projects. And the way projects were intended to work is to organize all of your tasks that refer to the same project. You could use these as individual projects or do what I do, which is to treat them more as categories, such as life, work, or house. So let's just add a couple of projects to have something to work with. So we're gonna come here to projects and we're gonna add, I'm gonna put in work, house, and life. To do this lets you have five total projects for free, so keep that in mind. And to add a note to a project, simply press hashtag when adding a note. So we're gonna add a note via control space like we agreed on earlier. And let's think of something such as clean up the garden. And that would make sense that it would go under the house project. So all you need to do is press hashtag and it's gonna auto complete when you press in house. So once you do that and you press add task, it'll no longer sit here in your inbox and you're gonna find it under the house project. So we can come back here to our inbox and clean this up a little and put everything under the house project. And we can then remove the section because that was just to show you how it worked. And speaking of sections, your projects can also have their own section. So if you come here to house, you can hover over, add the new section and decide if that makes sense for your workflow. And once you have sections, you can always view as a Kanban board and each section will be a board column. And then you can do the same for our other projects such as work and life in our case. So we can come here and type in book dinner Friday at 7 p.m. And then just finish up with a hashtag life. When you press add task, it's gonna be here on your life, but it'll also be here on today since we assigned this for today. And another thing to note is that these projects can also be nested. So if you drag it like so, and you put it under life, it's gonna be nested under life. And let's get that out of there for now. Okay, so let's now move on to filters and labels. And in the free version, you only have three filters. And although you can use these as complex filters by just coming here to edit filter and by typing in your filter query, by default, these are just different priority levels. Priorities one through three, one being the most important. In past versions of Todoist, both labels and filters were over here on the left by default. And if you want to add them back there, you simply hover over them and favorite them. And the point of these is to add your designated priority level when adding a task. So to illustrate this point, I'm gonna put up a bunch of tasks for tomorrow. So I'm gonna come here and put in just task one, tomorrow, P1, and I'm gonna do different levels for all five of them. And when you're done adding a bunch of tasks for tomorrow, you can come here to upcoming and you're gonna see that Todoist ranked them in order of priority. And the only exception here is this one because this one has a date and the other ones don't. So it wants you to see this one first, but then it ranks them by priority level. And if you come here to task number three and you instead change this from priority three to priority one and you come out of here, it's gonna show up as number one. So when you add a priority level to your tasks, it does two things. The first is that Todoist will sort your tasks in order of priority, P1 tasks on top, then P2, P3. And the second is that it will add all the tasks in P1 in the P1 folder and the same with P2 and P3. And if you click on priority one, you can see all the tasks that you assigned priority one to. And although I make use of the priority feature, I don't make use of the actual folder, so I don't favorite them. All right, so finally we have labels. And let me just add a quick label or two here. And all I wanna show you in this section is that when you're adding a label to your note, you need to type in the at symbol. So we're gonna come over here and press a random task. And to assign a label, just press this. And now it's gonna show up your labels. And you're gonna put in your label, press, press enter. And now if you come to your inbox, you can see that this one has label A assigned to it. Initially, you might be wondering why would this even be useful, but we'll get to all of that in the next chapter where I'm gonna be recreating my workflow. All right, so now I'm gonna recreate my entire workflow. Let's start with projects. And although I understand that projects are meant to be, you know, projects, I sort of use them as categories. 
So the free version lets us have five projects and I only use three. One is for work, another is for this channel, so YouTube, and a third one is for life. This leaves me with two available slots that I can use to either add more categories or treat them as actual projects. You know, I plan on moving houses within a year, so that'll probably have its own place when the time comes. So let me just clean this up a little and change this to YouTube. And I'm probably gonna put this as red. And here, work, I'm gonna change this to a different color so it's not the same. Let's put it as green. And the way I used to do this is that nothing stays on my inbox. So when I'm putting in a new task, all I gotta do is press hashtag and it has to go into one of these three, work, YouTube, or life. All right, so let's now move on to recurring tasks, which I think are definitely very overlooked and very important. I'm not gonna go over every single one, but some that come to mind and are definitely important are stuff like inbox zero every day at 10 a.m. And I'm gonna assign this to life. And when I press add task, it's not gonna show up here on my inbox because Todoist knows that it's sitting here on life. But if I come over here to upcoming, Todoist gonna show me that I have it tomorrow. And I like that Todoist doesn't populate this to infinity because that obviously adds no value to us. So the way they do it is that when you cross this one off, it's gonna move on to the next day and the next day after. So that's really, really useful. Some other ones that I have are weekly journaling every Sunday at 10 p.m. life. So that's done as well. Next up, monthly finances every end of month. And what this does is that it's assigned to the last day of every month. April has 30 days, so April 30th is when this one is due. And I'm gonna put this on life as well. And so that everything is not just related to life, I also have stuff like answer comments every other day and this is gonna go on YouTube. So then add task, that's done as well. And then I have a few work-related stuff and a bunch of regular house maintenance stuff like feed my dog Maki every day at two, change the Brita filters every two months, you know, the type of stuff that wouldn't really add value if I kept going here in this video. So now let's move on to filters. And like I went over in the previous section of this video, you can come here to edit filter and type in your filter query, but I don't really use that. I use it just as simple priorities one through three filters. And the way I look at them is that if something is red, it's plain and simply non-negotiable. That needs to be done that day, no matter what. Orange or P2 is for stuff that I want to do, but it wouldn't be the end of the world if I didn't get to them. And lastly, I have priority three or blue, which is items that I don't have any major level of priority and I'm only doing them if I finish red and orange. So on a normal day, I come to my today section on Todoist and what's in red needs to be done first. It's the priority then what's yellow, and only then do I even consider doing what's blue. If you're self-employed, you kinda need this level of discipline because there's no one there to force you into doing anything, so you really need to be disciplined and priority filters help me a lot with this. So let's now move on to labels. I use a total of six labels. The first three is to identify how long I expect a task to take. So I have a 10 minute option and I like to have it as olive green. I then have a 20 minute option and I have it as lime green. As you can see, it just gets darker and darker levels of green. And then the last 30 minute option and it's solid green. And I like to have all my labels on the left. So I'm gonna favorite all of them so they show up over here. So why is this so great? Let's say I just finished something I was doing. I look at the time and I have to leave the house for whatever reason in 20 minutes. I can pop in the 20 or 10 minute label over here and just tackle on a quick task. And then sometimes maybe I just need a break from what I'm doing. Maybe I've done priority one and two tasks for that day and I have nothing else going on. And I can go on one of these labels and tackle some tasks based on the free time that I have. And if you skip the overview of Todoist and need a quick reminder, to add a label, you need to put in an at symbol and then type in the label. And if you're not aware, you can mix and match all sorts of labels and projects and all of that. I can put in a 30 minute label on a P1 at work and it's gonna go into every individual compartment. So the next level up on labels is long. And these are tasks that I know are more than 30 minutes and in fact might even take multiple hours. Assuming these are low priority, I normally only look at them when I have a good amount of free time. And then the next level after that is called someday. And this is for tasks that are typically not only long, but stuff I'm not even entirely sure I want to get into and need to spend more time researching and considering them. For instance, I have stuff like consider learning Blender and I'm not even sure I wanna do that. 
I also have maybe paint this wall that you guys are seeing behind me so it's not plain white and boring. You know, it's things I want to get around to someday, but not in the immediate future. Normally, I come in here once a month. And then I have one of the most important labels here called on phone. And let me just add a random color to this. And what I use this for is to add tasks that can also be done on the phone. This is useful when I have some downtime waiting for maybe a doctor's appointment or God forbid DMV or something similar. Then I can just go into my to-do list and find a task to tackle. So now we can put all of this to action and use the example that I want to get around and do my thumbnail for this video tomorrow, which is very true. So to do that, we're just gonna go in control space, make thumbnail tomorrow at 1 p.m. Let's just say it's gonna take me 30 minutes and it's gonna go on YouTube. And it's definitely my number one priority for that day. Add task and we're done. So now you might be thinking, I have no use for the inbox since I always put in you know, a project and all of that, nothing's gonna show up on my inbox. And that's not entirely true. I use my Apple Watch to quick capture new tasks for Todoist. And when I speak into it, everything goes to my inbox. And when I finish my work for the day, I always make sure there's nothing on my inbox and nothing on my today. Another cool thing about Todoist is how many integrations you can have with other apps. I've tried a few integrations, but the only one that really added value for me and my workflow was the email integration. And the point of the email integration is that it lets me add an email as a task. And to see all of the available integrations, just come over here to integrations and discover integrations. So if you come here to integrations and press Gmail, you can see this little icon that's gonna sit in your inbox. So what I normally do every morning is I go through my email and if there's anything that needs attention, I will make a to do task by clicking on this little icon here. And I normally add stuff on the task. Let's say I'll be replying to an email that needs attachments and some other details. I'll put in those instructions on the task so that when I get to my desk and open up Todoist, I know exactly what to do. So as you can see, Todoist is already suggesting us to use the Google Calendar integration. And I actually prefer to keep things separate. So what I do is I like to have the stuff that cannot be changed on the calendar, such as a doctor's appointment or an assignment due date, etc. whereas everything else goes onto my Todoist. All right, so now I wanna go over some small but very important tips that I use with Todoist that really took my productivity to the next level. And the first one is using my Apple Watch with Todoist. If you have an Apple Watch or an Android-based smartwatch, you can add Todoist to your watch. And what this does is that when you press on it, you can speak into it and what you say will show up on your Todoist inbox. This is great if you have a short attention span like myself, because as sad as that may sound, a lot of the times when I think of an idea and I want to capture it, every second counts. Because if I need to pick up my phone or even worse, go to my desktop to type that out, it's gone. If I go to check my phone and there's an important notification staring me in the face, also gone. It's also extremely useful when you're driving or running or doing some activity where you can't easily use your phone. For tip number two, as the author of Getting Things Done, David Allen rightfully said, your mind is for having ideas, not for holding them. So add everything to Todoist, no matter how small it is. In my life, if something isn't on my Todoist or on my calendar, it's simply not happening. For tip number three, go over your Todoist at night and decide what you want to accomplish the next day and assign priority levels accordingly. You'll be very surprised at how much you'll get done as a result of just doing this. And lastly, end every day with what Todoist calls Todoist Zero. That means nothing on the Today page. Either postpone it or check them off. All right, so I hope this was useful and I hope it gave you some inspiration for your own Todoist workflow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.